before we begin the specifics of the musculoskeletal exam, I want to give you a few general principles that go to any assessment of any joint. We always start with a general inspection of the joints. So you want to make sure that you're looking for any evidence of asymmetry, or the joints look the same from side to side, any obvious deformities, um, evidence of changes in muscle bulk, um, either equally or unequally between side to side, evidence of swelling or redness in that location. You're also going to want to do palpation of the major anatomical landmarks for that particular joint. They're both bony landmarks and ligamentous landmarks, trying to assess for um, any pain or tenderness at those locations. You're going to assess for range of motion of the joints. For range of motion, we always start with active range of motion. If the active range of motion is normal, then under most circumstances, your assessment of range of motion is done. If the range of motion is abnormal or it elicits any pain, then you'll want to do passive range of motion uh, following up on that active range of motion. You're going to want to make sure you also do an assessment of muscle strength around the joint that you're going to be assessing. Um, that begins with an assessment of the muscle bulk around that joint. We're not going to demonstrate muscle strength testing in this video segments because we've demonstrated it during the neurological exam. So please refer to those videos for the assessment of muscle strength. Finally, remember that anytime you're going to be assessing a joint, you want to make sure that you assess that joint bilaterally. You're always going to want to compare one joint to the other. Um, especially if you have someone with a pain complaint in a particular joint, you want to see how that compares to the joint that isn't having any pain associated with it. For the assessment of cervical spine, you're going to be able to look at the patient from both the anterior and posterior positions. So from anteriorly, you're going to want to look at the patient. I'm going to have you lower down just a little bit for me. Um, so you can see the paraspinal muscles in the front of the neck. Um, and again, you're looking for head position. Is his head, is he able to look straight forward? Is his head tilted to one direction or the other? Does he appear comfortable? Then you're going to want to move posteriorly to assess your, uh, and to inspect further and to assess your landmarks. So again, looking for the same thing. Is the head appear uh, held steady or centrally? Then you want to palpate along the paraspinal muscles from the base of the skull down to the tops of the shoulders. And again, that's looking for pain or tenderness or any evidence of muscle spasm. Then you're going to want to palpate the area of the spinous processes. Again, from the base of the skull down to the tops of the shoulders. Now we're going to move forward and assess range of motion of the neck. So what I want to ask you to do is, for extension, look up towards the ceiling for me. And then look straight and look down as far as you can for flexion. Now I want you to turn your head from side to side, so look towards your right as far as you can, and now look towards your left as far as you can for rotation. And now we're going to go for lateral bending. So I want you, keeping your shoulders steady, tilt your head, your ear towards your shoulder on the one side, and then the opposite direction as well. For the neck, we generally don't do passive range of motion. Even if the active is abnormal, we're generally not going to do passive range of motion in the neck. For the shoulder, we want to make sure we get a full view of the shoulder from both anterior and posterior. So I'm going to ask you actually to remove your gown for me. All right, thank you. So again, we want to do a general inspection, looking for evidence of redness, looking for any evidence of asymmetry or obvious deformities. We want to be able to palpate the bony landmarks. So we're going to start with the clavicle. We're going to start with the midline of the clavicle where it attaches to the sternum, palpate out across the clavicle until we reach the acromioclavicular joint, and then palpate along the superior part of the scapula as well for full palpation. Again, remember doing that on both sides. So now we're going to want to do some range of motion. I'm going to start by asking you to take your arms and raise them up over your head from your sides like this, but I want to look behind you while you're doing it, okay? So I can uh, look at what's happening with the scapula. So if you just raise your hands up sideways over your heads, and thank you, and bring them back down. So I can see the full range of motion and the movement of the scapula at the same time. Now coming back from the front, I'm going to ask you to raise your hands over your head, but from the front. So moving your hands up like this and bring them back down. And now move them behind you as far as you can. Thank you. And then relax. So now what I want you to do is take your arm and sort of cross it across one direction. And now the same thing for the other arm. All right. So now if there are any abnormalities in that range of motion, I would do it passively. So I'm going to ask you to allow me to move your arm for you. So again, I'm going to lift your arm up over your head and back down. And also want to be able to be able 
Oh, move to the other side, excuse me, so I can see what's happening with the scapula. So I'll just move your arm up and back down. I'm gonna bring your arm forward. And remember to allow me to do the movements for you. And backwards. And now across to the side. Thank you. So now we wanna assess for internal and external rotation of the shoulder. So I'm gonna ask you to take your arms and put them so the elbows are bent at 90 degrees. All right, and I want you to move your arms outward as far as you can go. And now we wanna bring them back in. Problem is, is that the body is in the way when we try to do that. So what I want you to do is reach around behind you and how far up your back can you get your arm. All right, thank you, and you can relax. For passive range of motion for this one, again, bring your arm out, how far out can you get, and then bringing it back in. So now we're gonna start with the assessment of the elbow. So for the elbow, you might wanna make sure you again have a full inspection of the elbow so I can see all around it and see, again looking for redness or any obvious deformities. We're gonna to wanna to palpate the major landmarks. So for the elbow, that's gonna be the medial and lateral epicondyles and the olecranon, looking for pain or tenderness. Finally, we're gonna to wanna to look at full range of motion of the elbow. We're gonna have him do this in both arms at the same time. So I want you to straighten your arms all the way for me, bend them as far as you can, okay, for both extension and flexion. Now, put your hands like this with the elbows bent, keep your palms up. Now, turn your palms down and then turn them back up for the assessment of supination and pronation of the elbow. If this was abnormal, now I can assess it passively. So again, just relax your arm and let me do the movements for you. So full flexion, full extension at 90 degrees, pronation, and supination. All right, thank you. So now we're gonna demonstrate the evaluation of the wrist. So again, you want to inspect the wrist on both, the, uh, both surfaces of the wrist looking for any abnormalities, any swelling, or any redness. You want to palpate both the radial and ulnar heads, as well as along the joint line of the carpal bones. We're going to want to assess full range of motion of the wrist. If you show me both hands. So I want you to point your fingers towards the sky, point your fingers towards the ground for flexion and extension. Put them straight out for me. Turn your wrists inward and point them outwards for inversion and eversion of the wrist. All right, so now, again, if there's any abnormalities in that, we'll want to do passive range of motion. So just let me move the wrist for you. Full extension. All right, thank you. So now I want to also look at the hand as well. So for the hand, we're going to want to palpate all of the joints in the hand. So again, we've looked at both the dorsal surface and the palmar surface of the hand, looking for any abnormalities and we're going to palpate all of the joints. There are a lot of joints within the hands and the fingers. So we're going to want to palpate each metacarpal phalangeal joint and then each interphalangeal joint. And we want to get them both laterally as well as anterior posterior for each individual joint, looking for swelling or tenderness or any bony abnormalities in each joint. Okay, so now we want to do range of motions of the fingers. So if you could turn your hand like this for me. So open your fingers all the way and spread them. Close your fingers for flexion and extension. Open your fingers out and spread your fingers and put your fingers together. We've done general range of motion of the fingers. Uh, so now we want to isolate the thumb specifically. So we want to take your thumb and just follow my movements for you. For you. So you've got your thumb pressed against the hands. That's adduction. If you can move your finger out, that's abduction. You bend your thumb this way, that's flexion, straighten it out, that's extension, and now move your thumb across your hand to your pinky for opposition. Thank you. 